what's good youtube it's castle scope we back man with another video today i'm going to be breaking down markel fultz good stuff this artwork that i created in photoshop if you are a patron you are able to access this file so if not consider becoming a patron today also make sure you like comment and subscribe to this video what went through my head when making this so i always start off with a sketch and i just wanted to do something like just as Marco fultz is a rising star you can even see in this paragraph right here that he's a rising star but first let's start with the mask and how i get these masks looking the way they do so if you double click on this layer this brings us to the original mark l fultz mask i believe that i had just put a little bit of topaz adjustments on him then i usually put clarity on like on 100 usually and then i will do crisp but then for the finishing touches I put the transparency down pretty low after that's done, I just do a little bit of blending in terms of what the background is. So we went with a white background here. So in terms of the blending, I wanted to make sure that he had really bright highlights on these edges. Let's just bring everything off. I won't go by every single layer, but I'll just show you the basis of what went on. So first is selective color. I want to make sure that he's a little bit more toned, right? to the scene so that difference between orange and blue is something i really wanted to bring out even in the skin because if you think about skin you have a lot of orange and blue within the skin color balance to make them a little bit more blue and then see how i'm just layering on the selective colors so i get the skin looking right so i always do selective color and color balance when i'm playing around with the skin and the color of the subject and we have our brightness we have curves black and white was for the jersey see how i'm desaturating the jersey this is the rim light and i'll show you guys how to do i how i do this outside light so you go here on your mask go to fx i mean so you go on your mask then you're going to go to effects inner shadow and then you're going to put your inner shadow on linear dodge you can make it whatever color you want but just i would say make it somewhere that's not always white but closer to white so it's sat less saturated and then whatever the color the scene is right so it's a bluer so then you have your inner shadow right here if you turn that off now you don't have it see that but then you can right click and you can create a layer from it so you can right click and create a layer from it and then bring it above everything else that is so you can control your light source now more so if you add a mask they add a mask and i paint black on it and i can control where i want this outside light to be right so if i don't want it here i can paint black if i want it back paint white so that's what makes that a lot simpler and it's just a cool effect love inner shadow did the same thing in color balances on the rest of the mask we added our dodge and burn layer if you guys haven't watched my player retouch video all of this will make sense and i can link that once again so when i was thinking about color for this scene obviously i wanted to go with something that resonated with the orlando magic so blue and white were resonating with me i wanted to also implement like mountains because you think about orlando you're thinking about disney castle so you're thinking about mountains and that type of thing so this is an abstract geometry texture if you go with that black background see this is the abstract geometry texture available as well as part as a patron and you guys can download this abstract pack so i added this abstract texture just to get that feel of that disney vibe and then i even added a vector of the disney a disney vector too which i thought was pretty cool so you see this Disney vector. This is actually made in Illustrator, not by me. If you guys just search on Google, like vectors, they're actually really helpful with your work. And just looking up free vectors and doing your research can make your process a lot easier and can make some, you can make some dynamic uh, shapes and everything like that. So even on the shapes like here, the stars, I made these stars right in uh, Adobe Illustrator. Don't be scared of using different programs, guys. I know it's like at first it's it might be a little bit confusing Adobe Illustrator, but it's going to help you within a lot of your work. So if you want to make the star, so you want to make the star, let's go. So you hit, you go drag down, then there's a star option, right? So then click, drag it out, hold it down shift so it stays congruent. Make sure you hold down shift in Illustrator. That's a big thing. And then you can change the color of your 
of your star this is a color swatch so just like photoshop you have your swatches and not swatches you have your tabs that you can pick so you can choose a color maybe black if you want to choose a stroke this is a stroke there's no stroke right now if you want to make it red right and then that'll be a red outline just like photoshop now if you wanted to copy and paste that so you could just hit control C and you're going to go to Photoshop hit control V paste it as a smart object. Okay. Just like that. And that is how you get your stars in here on this one. I just only used the stroke. So I just used the outline that you guys had seen there. And then for this part right here, like to make it look 3d, I'm going to show you guys real quick. I just used the polygon lasso school. Boom. Made it look like, you know, an edge. Like so, go in just like that. Pick your color, whatever you want to cut, pick, and that's how you do that. Now, for these pinstripes, I just used the rectangle tool and I just brought the rectangle tool and made these little shapes and then staggered them so that it looks like pinstripes on the edge of the border. To make this iPhone screen on, I use the rectangle tool. So I use the rectangle tool like this, right? So you bring out the rectangle tool, but then how do I get those curves? There's always a properties panel for rectangles. So go to the properties panel and then you can curve this in. And that's why I did curved it in. And then after that, use a simple ellipse and change the color just like that. Easy enough. These like loading slash gradient bars. All I did here was I used one rectangle. Oh, let me lock this. I used one rectangle with a gradient. So this was filled before. So this is a rectangle with a gradient. So it was filled like the rectangle at a layer mask and then just fill it or just do a gradient tool. However you see fit, whatever you want your gradient to be, it can be a harsh gradient. It can be a soft gradient. I don't know, whatever your style is for gradients, that's what you do. And then after that, there was just a rectangle behind it. This folds text, this text is actually Akira. To get this sharper outline, when you guys do text, you can convert it to a shape. This is what I would recommend if you guys are going to be doing text uh, with strokes because I'm going to show you guys a difference right now. So say if I have a, some text here and I just go like, hello, right? Whatever. So I type out, hello. This kerning is actually very tight. Okay. So we type out, hello, right? And you want to add a stroke, right? So I see a lot of people do this. So they add the stroke, right? But once you get a little bit more, it starts getting all like shapely and curved you don't want to you don't want to have that it doesn't look professional so i'm going to tell you how to do it right click convert it to a shape first after that we can actually choose a, our own stroke put the stroke alignment on the outside so this bottom rectangle and then after that see how it's square so then you can make it sure that it's square on the edges and it looks a way more professional all right so i also had a pinstripe shape in the background here that you guys can't see too clearly because it's just something super subtle in the background but i'm gonna show you guys how i get these shapes really fast and really precisely so you double click and let's go back into illustrator with it all right so now we're in illustrator and here's how you do it so you're gonna make out one rectangle like so let's all right so let's make one rectangle so we have one rectangle here right now okay so there is the rectangle now, how am I going to duplicate this a bunch of times like you see on that background? So we're going to go to make sure you're on this, the selection tool, and you're just going to hold down Alt or option if you're on the Mac and you're going to click and you're going to also hold down shift while you're doing this so that it stays in line, right? So this snaps it in line, holding down shift and option. I don't know why this like had an accent there, whatever. And then after that, once that action is done, if you just hit control D, it's going to repeat this action a bunch of times okay so you could you could theoretically hold this down and it would repeat like forever but 
that's not what we're doing here but that's all you would have to do to make that background and then you would just do the same thing control c and go back to photoshop and you would hit control b all right i'm not gonna go too far into the typing and why i type everything the way it is because um, typography is a really something that I want to start bringing to the forefront, but I think that just getting all these logos in place and showing you guys the colors, the difference of colors and how I'm doing some of these shapes is really going to be helpful for you guys in this video. So it will be something that we can do coming up, but surely in this video, we're just going to focus on just the shapes right now. I'll show you guys some of the fonts that I used here though. I, I go simple. I use Arial text. Like I have no problem using Arial text. Arial narrow and Arial italicized right here. Delirium, this is a really good font. Um, Delirium NCV, if you guys want the links to these fonts, I'll just put them in the description. I will do that for you guys. Um, and then yeah, some more Arial for real. Like I didn't use any fonts that are too crazy. I just kept it really simple besides like these ones agency you know akira those were the ones that i really focused on agency and akira for the titling and then everything else i just kept simple with like Arial, but just making sure your colors look really nice and you uh vary up the the type of font you can get away with some really really clean visuals and aspects of the design i have the same color lookups that i've been using since i started designing literally so if you guys want those i have a video i can pop up as well Color look up, I use 98. It just gives it a like more lifted shadow feel. And I like that on my designs. I like to get that classic feel mixed with modern. This one brings that punch studio three. It just brought a little bit more punch to the design. See how like it just glows on some of these areas. And then a slight, slight, slight blue color over here. Just a blue tone, just to add a little bit. Just to add a little bit of sauce, all right? So and then for camera raw, I actually like the preset in camera raw. So like the vintage one, I really like these presets in camera raw. They just look really cool. If you guys haven't seen this profile thing right here, you can go to browse and then this brings you to a bunch of different looks that all can push your design to the next level once you're done. So sometimes when you have a mask and you do a camera raw, it's going to affect the colors. Like if you want everything to be desaturated so i had to re-desaturate these basketballs see how they were had a little bit of tone from camera i re-desaturated them and brought this brightness up a little bit in a little bit of selected color just to push it to that final piece so thank you guys for watching this video hope you guys learned a lot about markel fultz from this paragraph not playing but you know i do really hope that you guys learned a lot from watching this video make sure you guys like comment subscribe and if you want full access to this project file, along with texture and asset packs, live stream playbacks, and much more from my Patreon. It's also a really good way to support me and help me as a creative man, for real. So appreciate everybody that has been supporting me on Patreon. And yeah, if you're interested, hit the link below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay scoped. It's been the Arts of Athletes. Peace.